We're now moving to the last paper uh, of the session, Heterogeneous Multiprocessor Coherent Interconnects. Um, Kai Chirka will be presenting. She's, she's not graduating or looking for a job. She's been with TI since 2004, and she's leading the uh, multi-core coherent interconnects uh, platforms team where she's worked on shared memory and interconnect architecture and design for uh, ARM and DSP platforms. Job. <laughs> for somebody to come to my team. Okay. So, um, uh, I want to stress that um, uh, we don't have the mo monopoly of using this word uh, heterogeneous multicore, uh, multiprocessor, and coherence, because it looks like there's uh, a lot of familiar and traditional way that goes a long way beyond what we use the word. So, over the uh, entire um, presentation, I'd like to actually represent what the industry, uh, or on the chip level, build building uh, the chip process, how we use these words, and how we solve the problem on the, on the silicon. Do I have a? Oh. All right. OK. So uh, I want to start by uh, introducing TI Keystone 2 architecture. So this is the background that we are putting our interconnect on. Uh, on. So that's, um, that's a new architecture that we have been actually relatively new, not, not very new. If you Google uh, Keystone 2, TI Keystone 2, you will find uh, a list of devices that is already on the, uh, on the market. And MISMIC is the backbone of the entire Keystone 2 architecture to be able to put multi-core uh, ARM and DSP and potentially other processors to make this uh, hierarch the heterogeneous uh, platform work. Uh, we have a lot of tricks putting in our interconnected to make every everyone uh, you know, every process um, um, process in their own uh, speed. And also, we're the first one who actually uh, runs at the CPU uh, clock rate. <coughs> and the, uh, the crossbar is uh, tricky by um, able to enable the um, uh, parallel, par parallel compute and provide a simple uh, use case, use model for the, for the software guys, right? So um, we are um, we're able to build the crossbar um, with the clock rate speed. So uh, that's why we're choosing this architecture. Um, <coughs> I'm also going to introduce how we are uh, putting these heterogeneous processes together on the same platform instead of putting um, different uh, interconnects and then connected interconnects together. We actually put the, the, the cores on the same interconnect. Uh, and they are actually can talk with each other, share the same memory uh, on chip and off chip, and also go through the, the platform and, and talk with the SOC level uh, slaves. <coughs> Bandwidth management is very important for the shared uh, shared resources. We have multiple ways to address this. Uh, one more important thing, uh, as we know, that uh, ARM A15 provides the uh, coherence uh, feature. And uh, our inter interconnect supports this coherence feature. So then the uh, IO, the uh, peripherals, the DMA can share data with ARM without using any software uh, coherence ways. For example, you, ha you have to flush the cache. Here, the hardware takes care of it, so you don't need to, to manually flush the, flush the cache. Uh, memory t protection address translation is to address the, the multiple cores. ARM supports 40 bits address, our traditional DSP, and, uh, and system masters on only can address to 32 bit. So MISMIC steps in. Sorry, MISMIC represents multi-core shared memory controller steps in uh, to do this translation, aliasing, and virtualization to make different cores work on the same platform, see all the available address space. Um, <coughs> the last one is the uh, MISMIC scaling. So from the previous uh, um, slides, we can see that uh, um, people are willing or really uh, desire to have more cores on the ship. So how do we address that? You cannot just uh, put tons of uh, chips on the uh, cores on the chip without paying any penalties, right? So 
we have uh, certain ways to address that requirement. So <coughs> this is a pretty busy one. Um, the Keystone 2 is um, a platform that enables multi-core ARM, multi-core DSP, or multi-core ARM plus DSP platform. So uh, we deliver the highest performance at the lowest power levels to be able to give uh, up to 5.6 gigahertz of ARM. Uh, so the calculation here is that one ARM cluster has uh, four cores inside. Each one of them running, we enable them running at 1.6 gigahertz. So that's 1.4 times 1.4. That's 5.6. And also we enable eight DSPs on the, on the chip, each one running at 1.6. Here we're using a marketing slide that is <coughs> lower down a little bit to make it 1.2, but um, uh, so their frequency is slightly different. So you can see that for Mesmic to to both support them, then one of them has to have a asynchronous bridge, and I'm going to talk about that that bridging. <coughs> uh, Optimal for, for embedded applications like cloud computing, uh, media processing, high performance compute, uh, transcoding. All of that is because we have two different processors on the, on the chip. They can share. They, um, so you can run L1, for example, in the networking case, you can run L1, L2 level in DSP and L3 in ARM. And then ARM can, can uh, scheduling the, the tasks into, uh, split into different uh, DSPs. And also, uh, you can do a load balancing and uh, task migrations easily. <coughs> And uh, Keystone 2 architecture also is the first TI platform that offers the standard quad ARM uh, Cortex A15 combined with, uh, with the, the, um, the uh, TI TMS C6X high performance DSP <coughs> solutions. So uh, you can run uh, with this uh, embedded uh, infrastructure. Uh, to actually running closer to a um, general purpose process. MISMIC uh, multi-core shared memory controller is the one that I'm going to talk today. And uh, it is the hierarchy, the, the heterogeneous processor compute cluster platform. So uh, the roadmap wise, um, some of the devices is already out. Uh, so um, the three paths here, the red one is the highest performance. We make them running highest frequency, biggest n numbers of cores, and um, um, the, uh, the, the, the most uh, condensed uh, compute. And um, so for example, the, the first one, uh, we have eight DSP cores and uh, four uh, one megabyte of RAM in the first generation of MISMIC. The a middle range of that one, we put four DSP cores and uh, uh, two meg of uh, SRAM in, uh, in the system. Uh, and then you can even lower down to the most cost sensitive the, or, or the, the lowest performance, uh, but highest, highest efficiency because of the power is also lowered. And you can have two DSPs and two megabytes SRAM. I'm mainly going to focus on, on MISMIC 2 because MISMIC 1 is the one that has the multi DSP core, and MISMIC 1, the generation, uh, puts in the ARM on, in the picture and supports the coherence uh, and all those fun features. But keep in mind that this is the, uh, the in the MISMIC roadmap, we have been uh, designed in the way that always consider that will be tiers of the, the devices on this platform. So we enable the configurabilities to, to uh, support high performance, middle range, and, and low performance, and, and high efficiency. Um, this is the overall crossbar topology. On the, on the left side, you can see Okay, this doesn't work. Um, <coughs> the SOC, um, we have the processor interface, which is the TIC6X, and each one, each interface has a 256 bit bus, and they're running at 1.3 gigahertz. Same as the same as the CPU frequency. ARM A15 has four cores in there. 
So um, if you are familiar with their protocol, they have, uh, they have a read-write um, interface, and then they provide a snoop interface. So that is for uh, support the coherence. In MISMIC, to be able to address the num uh, headline blocking problem, we actually redistributed this uh, traffic into non-blocking traffic and blocking traffic. So imagine if they have a request that that come into the shared memory controller and triggers the coherent, uh, the triggers the snoop that ARM has MISMIC has to uh, <coughs> to poke the uh, the core then um, the core has to deal with the, sn the snooping coming back to the to MISMIC, while there's another traffic, another request right behind it, also requesting the same one, then you would have a, a blocking issue. So to avoid this, this uh, blocking, um, percent potential blocking inside the crossbar um, interconnector that, that we have, uh, we split the traffic into, you, you put all your snoop uh, requests and all the cache maintenance on one channel, which we named it as non-blocking, and all the uh, regular traffic and that initiating the snoop on the uh, blocking channel. So we guarantee that non-blocking channel never got, get blocked throughout the entire MISMIC system. So um, the, uh, the, this potential issue that when you support the coherency won't, uh, won't be an a issue in our system. So you can see that's why we have a um, we have uh, three channels in there for for the arm at the uh, the right hand the left hand corner there <coughs> just to to provide a uh, snoop response and uh, the other two uh, ace channels for for arm and we also provide SOC slave interfaces there's there are two of them. One dedicated for the on-chip on SRAM, the other uh, dedicated for the off-chip SRAM. So uh, they don't blocking each other either. And on the uh, um, in internally on-chip SRAM, we have eight parallel banks. So um, every single master can access one bank at the cycle. Um, <coughs> so uh, okay, how do we do the heterogeneous uh, process of connection? Uh, this is the DSP only, uh, so you can look at this as uh, as MISMIC one. Um, so we have shared run banks in parallel, and um, just um, a a concept here uh, for C C6X with a XMC stands for external memory controller. It has a prefetcher, it has uh, a uh, reordering buffer uh, inside, and it does a, a clock conversion before in the first generation because we're running at clock two, clock by two, CPU clock by two frequency, and then in MISMIC two, we did that. So what what happened is that the uh, uh, Eagle has a AXI to TI SOC bridge, and this bridge is uh, um, is used for asynchronous uh, crossing. So the core can the Eagle can run at one point, or ARM A15 can run at uh, 1.4, and MISMIC still runs the same frequency as the DSP and the whole system. So what is inside the bridge? Um, <coughs> so the left side is MISMIC-1, right side is uh, a equivalency of the bridging inside MISMIC-2. Uh, so on the top we have the A15 core, and in between that's the, the bridge. What the bridge does is a clock conversion, bus conversion, free, um, protocol conversion, and re reordering buffer. So in the um, uh, the color is different, you can see, between left and right because the dom clock domain, power domain, actually d does change. And, and from, the, from the ARM side, we have the snoop response, and then we have the normal channel. On the MISM side, we, have, we make it non-blocking channel, blocking channel, and widen the bus from 128, f from 128 to 256. So therefore, we can address the full bandwidth uh, along with the rest of the system. So bandwidth management side, we have the, <coughs> so this is the signature architect uh, arbitration inside MISMIC that we're doing. It's called a multi-level user programmable independent uh, arbiter. So in, the, uh, uh, in this uh, 
diagram, you can see there's uh, three blocks there. We have a request priority uh, selection, static uh, priority, and then a fair share. So when the request coming in, they, they bring in a priority number. That's a three-bit uh, encoded uh, priority number. System level, you can user can control it. And we respect that uh, priority level and do the arbitration there. But if you're on the same priority level, then we'll trigger this fair share selection. And the fair, fair share selection actually remembers the history when you are winning or, or losing and uh, give a bounded counter. Will not have a infinite counter that you know in silicon we cannot implement. <coughs> so there's a trick there. And then if that still come up with ties, then we do with a, a static priority. And there's a, a, a box down there saying scrubbing. So in the RAM bank, we, we have a ECC support. And the ECC actually has a background scrubbing. It reads the data periodically and then correct it and then write it back. And that guy needs some uh, atomic uh, uh, read, modify, write. So you cannot disturb it. If, if Scrubber is winning the arbitration, then it, it's, um, it gets the uh, banks for multiple cycles that it needs. And then the uh, fair share runner will take, uh, uh, will take the control. OK. So level one, I pretty much covered it. What is, uh, what is not is this starvation bound. So we still could have, uh, um, after all this arbitration, some uh, real-time requester could still be uh, hunger. So uh, what we do is we, we put in a um, memory map register so then the user can control this traffic to be, uh, um, to be bounded in a certain starvation bounds. If the threshold is reached, then the request is going to be bumped all, all the way to the highest priority overall. And then uh, it will arbitrate um, among all the highest priority guys and, and get a much better uh, chance to one. Um, <coughs> Second layer is this uh, fair share. So this table is kind of tell you how we how we do this in with a little trick. Um, cycle number one, com compete masters A, B, C, D. They all have the same status. Let's say they're all on the same priority. Count it as zero. And then you just use that to fix priority and, and pick A is the winner. Then what the counter do? The counter will say, OK, I see three, three other competitors beating by you. So you are going to get your history count as, num as minus three, and everybody else get a plus one. So, um, and you can see the total credit, if you plus, uh, add them together, minus three plus one plus one plus one, you get zero. So this is a counter bound. Our, count, our counter will never go beyond minus 3 plus uh, and to the plus 3. So this is, uh, this is how we are able to implement it in the, on the silicon uh, without putting a, a, a maximum uh, bound or a, or a minimum bound here. <coughs> so uh, the second cycle, um, A is gone, B, C, D is going to be the, the competitors with each other. B is picking. And then B has two other competitors. So then he gets uh, plus one, minus two. Then his number goes down to minus one. But we still maintain the credit, uh, uh, total credit as zeros. So um, such and such as uh, cycle three and four. And then here, we, are, we, we built a uh, compet competition history. So from here on, you can uh, actually, the number is showing how many uh, times you won, how many times you lost. And then if there's A coming in again, then um, you can you can see that A is not going to win in the third cycle and fourth cycle until it waits for its counter to be built up uh, for him to be uh, uh, to be eligible. Okay, so another trick that we're doing for the head off line uh, head off line blocking is called uh, escalation um, priority escalation. So here is also a a timeline uh, diagram. For at the first uh, number one um, <coughs> diagram, we can see CPU and CP, CPU zero and CPU one has uh, two two um, 
pipes. So this represents the, the in-flight request. And the numbers is their priorities. So you can see the CPU 0 sends a whole bunch of uh, priority number 2, which considered higher priority than priority number 4 for the CPU 1. So CPU 1 keep losing the arbitration because it's in the lower priority. But it, has a, it, it did a contact switch. And it, it goes to a critical uh, task now. And the priority number um, bumped up to one, but he has a whole bunch of backlog of, uh, backlog of the number four priority uh, that couldn't win arbitration, therefore stop him from going, uh, pushing forward. So what we're doing is, OK, I see a one in the queue. So everybody else in front of this guy in the, for the same core will, will temporarily assume number one priority. Therefore, it can win over number zero. And then in the third cycle, uh, this, this uh, queue get uh, drained, and the uh, critical task get uh, pushed through. So, uh, <coughs> And then we also have, uh, if you remember, the XMC external memory controller has a prefetcher. Uh, it's a hardware prefetcher. And we also have a squashing mechanism that if your prefetch is uh, behind your request, you're not prefetching, you're post-fetching, then we just squash them and, and let it uh, uh, go away. Because it's not demand missing, so we're not having any functional problems. Uh, OK, I will coherence. Um, so um, if we have multiple uh, cache in the system, the coherence is the, um, is the concern. So two rules to follow. One is, at any given time, all the caches or the, the components that share the data should see the same data if they're in the shared states. Second, if somebody is modifying the data then or, or multiple ones are, sh are mo modifying the data, then everybody that uh, um, partition, uh, all the components that partition in the sharing should see the data change in the same order. So. What ARM does is that they are forcing, when somebody is trying to modify the data that's shared with the other components, then this guy will be guaranteed to be the only one that modifies the data. So what you do is you send a uh, read unique to, uh, to the interconnect, and then the interconnect to snoop everybody who has the data. Therefore, they don't have, nobody else except this guy has the data. And then he can modify it safely. And then if somebody else that's sharing the data wants it, then it will miss its cache and go uh, request it from the, through the interconnect. And then interconnect snoop it out of the, the <coughs> modified core and, give, uh, and, and also make the data being shared among the multiple components. So that's the, the basic idea. Um, with the, with the hardware coherence, we, we can avoid the software coherence solution that um, require manual cache uh, flushing, software inter-processing inter uh, synchronization that's very time consuming and error prone. So here I'm trying to show uh, animation. Uh, let's go quickly. Here, uh, MISMIC is sitting in between. Coher CC represents coherence controller. And the, uh, the little array there is uh, a RAM bank. And DMA and A A15 are supposed to share in the data. And there's a piece of block there, a, a purple block inside A15, represents that the data is modified at this block. So OK, A15, is, uh, DMA now issues a share read to the address A. And MESMIC coherence controller gets the, get the information, and then uh, it issues a snoop for A15 to ask for, the, for this block. And then A15 responds with the, with the data that is updated to the co coherence controller. And then MESMIC write the data into the shared uh, SRAM space and then give it to, to DMA. So by doing this, we are uh, we're doing a spec spec speculative reading um, at the endpoint memory to allow the snoop latency and endpoint read latency to overlap. So that way, we improve the performance. You won't see a difference if the data is shared. It, it will be just read it through from the from the endpoint uh, slave. But if it is modified, yeah, we have to wait for the snoop to come back. But the the um, memory will be updated. Um, 
simultaneously. So what, what happened if, if DMA trying to write? So if the DMA issues a read to the memory, um, to the block A again, and again, the, uh, the starting with the A15 has that block modified. So we assume that a, the DMA doesn't have a cache in there. So that's a, a common thing. Um, <coughs> and then um, Mismic will issue a snoop back to the uh, to A15. At the same time, it will write the data into the into the RAM bank, and also remembers which which um, um, bytes or strobes are modified by DMA. So it could be not a full line write. It, it writes the few few bytes. So those bytes will be remembered in the in the uh, RAM. So I know that DMA writes the latest uh, for those for those bytes, but ARM has uh, old, uh, some new bytes for, you know, in their, in their cache of the other ones. So then when we get this snooped back, then um, into the, uh, give the updated data that A15 updates, now we merge them together. So, um, so MISMIC will mask the stale bytes that is being updated by DMA and not updating those bytes and only update the A15 modified bytes. So then you don't have to save uh, what DMA has write, what ARM has write, and then merge them together. So then we save the, we save the hardware to have a uh, write buffer to save one of the master's uh, writes and then merge with the second one and then write into you know, uh, the third step to do it. We are allowing everybody to go through no blocking as far as I remember what you are, the first one or the second one, then uh, we, we make sure the functionality and, and data is always consistent this way. Uh, okay, this is a very busy one. I think uh, everybody read it from the paper. It's very clearly stated how it works because it's a, a combination of the, the, all the uh, examples, the read, write, and, uh, uh, and, write, uh, and read again. So. Uh, Okay, memory protection. This is what I mentioned before for uh, f for every uh, masters to be able to see the entire memory space because we'll, we're supporting six uh, forty bit address space. Uh, okay, this is our die uh, photo. Um, if you can see that in the in the arm is on arm is here and DSPs are the DSP cores are here. Mismic is in the middle. All these little blocks on the side are the uh, are the RAM banks. So we are um, in the uh, with this floor plan, we 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 can reach uh, uh, achieve 1.3 gigahertz at 25 uh, 28 nanometer process. Scaling, oh, you can put four uh, MISMIC clusters together and hook up with, with the system on chip infra infrastructure to be able to support four times of the uh, uh, core numbers. So uh, eight times four DSP and four times four ARM all in the, on the same device. Okay, that's pretty much it. Yeah.